Making a life worth living and a retirement worth having is really about the people in our lives. It's totally about what happens at the end of the business day when we all, as mature adults, return home and live out our days with the people who we love, our family. Now, when I'm talking about family, I'm not talking about a birth family. Our birth family is our mom and our dad and our siblings, but they are not our family as adults. Sure, they participate in our lives a little bit. We might go to their homes occasionally for holiday festivities or meals, but they are not the people who know us the most. They are not the people in our work lives. They are not the people who are dealing with us in the day-to-day. -day. Our significant others, our spouses, our children are really the people who sort of know us. They don't know us completely because they too are literally not with us every minute of the day. I was in a breakfast restaurant here in the local area and watched a man that I have seen many times producing videos online show up and he was there with his daughter and it looked like some high school friends. What I noticed was the man was too busy in his phone, really not paying much attention to his children, and I thought, well, maybe he's got a lot of stressors in his sales career, but that's not my point. The reality is that those children are the ones that are going to produce for him a life in retirement. You see, our lives right now are producing lives for our children most of the time. They're producing a series of food for our families, a roof over our heads, and literally the opportunities we have for retirement are based solely, sadly, and completely on our own materialistic efforts. What I mean by that is that financially, we are so responsible for ourselves that we are literally left alone in retirement. My own mother at 85 has been blessed by my father's incredible work effort, his incredible ability to save money, and on top of that, his wise, sound investments in products that really made him a life for retirement. He sacrificed holidays with his company that he worked at for more than 40 years, and that was during a time period when there was a silver bullet, but there was always an opportunity to earn <clears throat> to trade vacation time for other types of retirement pay. In our life, we have now companies that don't think much about people in their old age. They want to remove their responsibilities of helping folks to have a retirement. And what does that mean for our retail people? The people who touch our food, that touch our lives, that touch our, our abilities to have products and services in the day today. Let's face it, we're buying toilet paper from an hourly employee. We're producing water for our lives with manufacturing employees who may come from another country. You see, in our lifetime, we're going to lose a lot in America if we don't literally start producing children who are willing to work at those modest wages. Now, there are certainly some cutting-edge companies out there, like we've seen sometimes portrayed in the news, that have reversed the entire model of corporate America. They have literally said one of two things. Either those at the bottom make the most, or everyone in the company makes the same. Now, literally think about that, that the CEO is making as much as the janitor. What that literally means is that everyone in that company is living a life worth living. They're not worried about finances, and they can happily produce and perform for that corporation. Now, why don't we do more of that, literally? Why don't we have more people sharing the wealth in the world? Well, mainly because there has to be an ideology shift in our lifetime. On top of that, there has to be a mentality shift in terms of who has value in this world. You see, the homeless people that I've talked about a little bit have included myself now, and sadly, for a second time. The first time I was homeless, I literally became homeless because of a love loss, and then another, and another, and it was just too much for me. And I just couldn't fathom life without those three women in my lives, in my life, rather. But openly, it's not about whether I'm a perfect enunciator, or whether I'm a perfect journalist, or a perfect reporter, or even a perfect marketing person, or a perfect language school owner. It's not about that. What it literally means is that every person who is producing a living that is caring for their life right now is at the little risk of homelessness. Now, if you don't think so, that's perfectly fine. I certainly never thought in my wildest dreams when I heard some of the other people in my community talking about homelessness, I never thought that I would ever be homeless. I actually was somewhat offended that some of the folks that I was hearing about were offended. Like, how is that remotely possible? 
but I now know how it's possible. It's possible because other people think they have the literal right to take away our property, our personhood, our paperwork, and literally that's what happened to me. I moved into a home with some help of family because of my financial situation and a credit situation that I did not put upon myself that actually a sibling did to me. And because of that, I couldn't get my own place. And that's crazily uh, unreal to me because for 17 uh, some odd years, I didn't have a need for credit at all. My word was my bond in my previous living establishment, and I lived there a long time, almost practically 10 years. I loved where I lived. It was my favorite place in the world to live there in the arts and design district of that small community, and I loved my home. I loved it so much that it was a great struggle for me to move out singularly on my own after my life partner had long returned to her home country. Now I share little tidbits of myself out of authenticity and wanting to have a real relationship with you who's listening, but also in terms of transparency. I have never lied to you about one thing that I've said. I've given you total opinion about my feelings about the inappropriateness of our police forces today and openly their inadequate and illicit activities. But that's my opinion based on experience that I've had. It may not be the same experience that you have if you literally have a best friend who's a police officer. Now, I'm only going to say that one time. I'm a journalist. I make observations. I have experiences. And from that seasoning, if you will, I render an opinion. Everything I say is opinion, and absolutely, someone can be pissed off about my opinion. <clears throat> but literally, they have no lawful right to be listening to me if they're not my closest friend or someone I'm trying to sell business to. Literally, this website and what I do in LinkedIn are totally for my professional career orientation. It's about me sharing reports about things that I observe. And in life, we have observations, but we don't always share those ideas and ideologies with other people. That is truly what a reporter does. They go out, they research, they investigate, they talk to people, and then they share information. And that's literally what I'm doing in sort of an odd and different sort of way than I was doing in marketing. My marketing minutes I've set on hold for a short time. Every once in a while, I'll share something based on an experience. And I've got several marketing minutes that are coming up that I think people want to look at. How to handle consumer complaints. How to handle some other issues, even as simple as how do you handle a bathroom in a public establishment. But we'll talk about that a little later because everything that we do, every single thing we do, and every single thing our employees do, represent our firm. And we'll talk more about that later. But in my life, we're really talking about our family. Who we choose and select as a life partner makes all the difference in the world, not only for us, but the futures of our children. If we chose a hot commodity as a partner, they might only last for a short period of time, maybe literally only six or seven years. But in my life, my life partner lasted almost 20. Now, if I literally say that, everybody and their brother wants to pry into, well, when did you get married and what was the wedding like and all those sorts of things. And the reality is we have many types of families in this world who come together in a moment of friendship, partnership, business relationship, and then fall in love. So who's to say when that relationship began and when it ended intimately is really no one's business. And that's one of my major points that you'll see as I start to produce silly little videos that I just want to be have watched for about eight seconds. I literally just posted one up that people may not get. But what we need to realize is that we are selling our bodies in ways that we don't even realize. And that is a fundamental flaw in our Constitution, I believe. I used to have a little book in my possession that my father gave me about the U.S. Constitution. I literally believe some police officer pilfered it in the middle of the night at my mother's house or in my vehicle, but I can only say that because who else has the technological skill to open a locked car or to enter a woman's lawful residence, which would be my mother? So when I talk about these things, I'm talking seriously. Now I'll talk later about other things I've observed in terms of the protection of our property because that is a major pet peeve of mine since I've literally been stolen from it every place now that I've lived except for my birth home, I believe, but who knows about that. In reality, when things go missing, there is only a logical explanation. It's not emotional. It's not based on whether or not we like the people who are staffing a place. It's totally based on the fact that you had something, you left it there, and now it's gone from its place. I've had lots of gifts that I was setting aside for children out of my life's work, my life's property, my life's possessions, my travels abroad that have literally been stolen from me by people I don't even know. 
Now, I'm going to talk about that a lot because it pisses me off to no end that someone literally thinks they have the right to unlock something of mine and take something out of mine. But it might feel the same to you because it might feel just like it does for me, that it's a total violation of our personal rights. The fact that we work our butts off to produce a life for ourselves, to produce experiences for ourselves, to produce travels, to go on vacations with our families, to do things literally in our business careers. We pick up mementos of those moments of time that help make the memories of our lives to talk about when we're old and grave, and someone literally thinks they have the right to take them. And that's a flaw in American society and the rest of the world. We must start producing children who understand our rights. And that's a major point that I'm trying to make with all of these comments. So whether you've listened to this audio file or whether you listen to another audio cast, it doesn't really matter. What I'm saying literally is you are solely responsible for the education of your children and whether or not they respect the personhood, property, and paperwork of another human being. So when we're talking about this, this really expands across many facets of our society, not only in terms of how leaders treat their employees, and I recently just saw fabulous, at least from the visual point of view and the listening point of view, fabulous Taco Bell manager. A little rough around the edges, but she is great with her people and great with customers. I was amazed. But I've had some positive experiences over across my homelessness with Taco Bell folks, and I'll tell about a young couple in another story of magic. Most of these audio casts of late have been more on the mayhem of life, and that's my right. I will get to the magic once you understand what a serious person I am, how intelligent I might possibly be in your mind is not important to me. Intelligence is subjective, sure it can be tested, but literally it's about whether or not something I say makes you go, hmm, I can see that, or oh, I don't agree with that, or practically, oh, what a bozo. And that's okay. That's your opinion. We all have them. Now, I'm waxing on a little long to make a point, but in reality, when you're not sharing one thing about your life with people, don't expect them to jump off the cliff to help you find a new life once you become homeless. You see, in my life, I was in a bicultural relationship, and that had different type of cultural mores. It had different type of connections, and most of those connections were foreigners who were not here literally for the long haul. So when I lost life, it was difficult to go about producing new life. Most of my clients in my Japanese language program had timed out. And there's a certain timing of every style of demographic of a target market. My young students had a certain level of time that they would often stay with us. As an observation, we could predict that. And literally, our adults had a different level of time and a different length of time. And we could usually tell who those folks were based on their need for the language itself. Even one of my favorite ladies, who was older, mature, working still, was one of those people that it wasn't exactly a surprise that she left, but her emotions got the best of her, literally. Whether or not she's still speaking Japanese, I don't literally know. But that's not my point. My point is that in life, when shit hits the fan, it's our people in our lives, our relationships, our friends, our family, our church members, our synagogue uh, relationships, whatever your practice of faith or philosophy group is, that literally help us when we need them most. In my life, I've had family, birth family in particular, who've totally betrayed me, totally screwed my life, totally destroyed my, my legal documentation, and openly, I will never forgive them for that. If they had the same little father as me, which I'm presuming they do based on how I look and how they look and how we match our parents visually, that I'm appalled. My father would probably turn over in his grave. I highly doubt that in his latent years of life that he said, go ahead, girls, do this to your brother. Or go ahead, son, screw your little brother. But openly, that's what's happened to me. So when I talk about it factually, I'm telling you the absolute truth. And if anyone in my family birth family in particular, ever gives you a call, you better pick up the phone and call me right away. Because literally, I'm in the process of suing their asses off. And I have the literal legal right to do it. My legal documentation is mine. It doesn't belong to any person. No person in authority, no person in the government, no person at all. And while the American president might like to think otherwise with his multiple wives and liaisons and things that we have to hear about in the news, he is no imperfect person. He's no perfect person is what I literally mean. And hopefully that means the rest of us can be imperfect too. He's got a foreign wife, so did I. Go figure. It happens in life. People have cross-racial cross -racial relationships. Are we so old in our mindset that we can't let people love who they need to love? 
Now, you might think I'm off track. I'm not, because what are we literally talking about? We're literally talking about the fact that if your money in your bank only lasts you for the month or only lasts you for a couple months after you've got it, then basically you're not prepared for retirement at all. Most men in their 40s and 50s have put something aside, we'd hope, for retirement, but literally it's rarely ever enough. And that's facts based on financial planner information that we all listen to at those networking events that we all hear about. And we know that those young, smartly dressed folks are trying to produce for themselves a life worth living and retirement worth having in the materialistic world in which we live. And in truth, there are some interesting women that I met in those networking events who really do that, but they totally miss out on sales because of their social lacking of skills of understanding what men are really thinking about all the time. I've certainly written plenty of sales presentations for women who literally say, this doesn't feel like me, this doesn't sound like me, and I literally want to smack them and say, it's not about you. It's literally about creating an affinity with the person that you're talking to, and a man does not give a shit about your daughters and your photos of them. No offense. It's not that we don't care. It's that in reality, we've got so much in our mind about worrying about what we've got to do to pay for our own lives that looking at your beautiful little girls is not something that a man typically does unless it's a brand new baby. So, or unless you're trying to solicit us for something else, and we're not interested in that in the business world. At least we shouldn't be. Sure, most men are thinking about a lot of things all the time, and we all know that joke. But in truth, in the professional realm, it's inappropriate, it's immoral, and men need to get that on their faces right now. That in truth, we are required to be polite when we'd like to be impolite. We are required to not beat somebody to death when we'd like to for them if they're stealing our property out of locked places and locked storage units. We are required to respect officials when they are rude, disgusting, and literally violate our rights all the time. We are required to not get irate with medical practitioners who lie to us about our bills, who put us into medical financial hawk and then literally won't take a friggin' phone call when we're trying to get them on the phone. Society has some major problems, but the problem is not society. It's literally the people who run those positions and the mentalities of those who wrote the procedures. That's it. If we literally want to change the world, we have to start with the people in terms of their training in childhood. We have to shift our procedures in terms of what we educate them on, literally. And on top of that, we have to write common sense procedures that make the world a safer and better practical place where people aren't led to do things illegally. So what does that sound like to you? Does it sound like anything other than common sense? I don't think so. So when we're talking here and when I'm running long and when you're waiting for the literal hit of my life, it's not going to happen. We're building a relationship. You see, sales, yes, can be made in one time, according to the sales gurus of the world, that you can be the greatest salesperson in the world if you can make a one-hit wonder sale. Let's face it, there's many ways to make a million dollars. You can have one sale for a million dollars like they did in the dot-com industry when the dot-coms were high and the young uh, yuppies were figuring out how to sell dot-coms before they became regulated, where you can't really sell them for that much and most people just kind of roll their eyes at a dot-com that's now priced at $1,000. I have a dot-com that someone took over. I didn't give them that right to do that. They're trying to sell it to me for $1,000. Like, hey, I owned that in the first place. I shouldn't have to spend another thousand dollars on something I previously owned. I just let it go because I didn't feel like it was producing for me. But I still have a, a dot info, literally to get less junk mail. Now, in life, I'm talking about a lot of things. I'm talking about real things. And literally, that's what people do on the radio. They talk about real things, real experiences, live events. And in my life, I've been messed over by people who lie, steal, and cheat me out of a life. So my la little attitudes on the audio cast are going to be different. They're going to be matter of fact. They're going to be manly. They're going to be piss on you people. And that's not me. Normally, I'm delighted to see the Lord and what he can do. I'm fascinated by animals that communicate to us in so many ways that we miss. I'm absolutely mystified by the people who can understand those people. I met a lovely woman who owns a horse farm, and she totally got me in seconds because she works with horses that communicate in a beautiful way through the spirit world. But that's my life. We're going to talk about magic in a little while, but are you going to literally be ready for it? Or are you going to think I'm off my rocker? Or have I said enough reasonable things in these last audio casts that you're going to like, you know, he really knows what he's talking about. But if you want to test me, get your butt in my car and we'll go for a drive. God will take us precisely where either I need to go or you need to go without any sort of GPS that you're used to, without any technology. 
and I've literally proven that the manufacturers have violated our rights and given out information on our vehicles to people and authorities that they should not have. I literally know they violated our rights by putting kill switches in our vehicles. Who gave them the right to give away our rights to our property so that someone in authority can press a button and it kills our car on the road, giving us all kinds of little expenses? You see, we have to demand our rights come back to us. And that's something that I'm on a bandwagon for. So if you believe in having personal rights, personal freedoms, personal liaisons that nobody has the right to talk about, then continue to listen to my audio cast, support me in getting a program, and openly give me some help in life. Or give you allow me to help you. That's really what I do. The other day I literally saw a van driving down the road. This guy had a great side of his van. It was a plain white van, sure, boring as snot, but it had a great uh, capture of his business. But if you just tweaked one word, it would have been superb. Now that's my opinion. If he had changed prices to rates, he would have had the best little alliterated tagline in the world. But clearly he made it himself or had some help making it. And it wasn't exactly perfect. It could have been perfect. But that's my opinion. Am I a perfect alliteration or literate, literate person? Not necessarily. Do I use words incorrectly? Sure, probably all the time. We're all products of our educational environment and the stressors in our childhood. But in reality, what I'm talking about is the right to be heard, the right to be seen, the right to say, these are my rights, leave me the hell alone, and the right to have my own property left alone by my birth family, by people I don't even know as strangers getting into my car, and I'm trying to figure out how they're doing that. The door is locked. So we have a lot to work on in America. We have to begin literally at the forefront in our own families, talking to our children about rights of our own and rights of others. This has been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications LLC, talking about literally the importance of family life, the importance of real, authentic conversation, and how it impacts the lives of other people as we grow, age, and take our mature role in life of having employment. Thanks for listening.